Hi, I'm Peter Ashley, Director of Marketing and Communications for Mendoza. Welcome to today's episode of Mendoza Dialogues. You're in for a treat today. We have one of Notre Dame's favorite daughters with us, Ruth Riley. Let's meet her right now. Ruth, thanks again for being here. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I'm excited to be on the show. <laughs> Great. Well, I know you're obviously quite well known for many things, incredible basketball career, charity work. Tell us a little bit about your story in terms of you know, how you got to where you are. Well, it started with my mom, I think the greatest influence in my life. My dad left when I was young, so mm -hmm. single parent raised, not a lot of means growing up, but taught me the value of hard work, um, created this foundation of my faith. Mm -hmm. And then most importantly, I think just taught me to dream big and to chase after those dreams. And um, I've just been truly blessed for a lot of them to become, to have come true in my life. I think, I think you've had more dreams come true than probably most people, you know, most groups of people would have. Mm -hmm. uh, so 2001, Notre Dame championship, most valuable player, right? Mm -hmm. Five point seconds left, I mean, 5.8 seconds left, two free throws to win. And then 2003, Detroit shock and, and, and a WNBA championship, correct? And then 2004, so that's enough fantastic dreams coming true as it is, then there's the Olympics. So take us back a little bit to those moments in terms of obviously incredibly exciting, but uh, what, looking back at it, what did you feel like you learned and what did you take away from those incredible experiences? Well, I want to take you back because a lot of people look at the destination and, and especially our young athletes and they say, I want to accomplish what you have. Mm -hmm. And they don't think a lot about what went into getting there. Right. And so for me, it's, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of hours in the gym, great influences in my life with coaches and especially here at Notre Dame, obviously with Coach McGraw, one of, one of the greatest um, influential figures in my life and, um, and just overcoming adversity and setting goals and a lot of things that, that um, great leaders have, I think sport teaches you. And I've been very fortunate to have a good combination of, of all of those coming together and um, I learned a lot here at Notre Dame. I think what Notre Dame does is it gives you this incredible platform of faith and academics and for me, obviously athletics. Mm -hmm. And you have to choose and make a choice of how you want to embrace that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so whether I was on the court or in the classroom, I knew that I had incredible teachers and coaches, but um, spent a lot of hours studying and a lot of hours over at the JACC on my own practicing and um, good things happened. Practicing a lot of free throws, I'm sure, right? As, among other things. Yes. Right? <laughs> so you mentioned on your, on your website, uh, ruthriley.com, correct? Uh -huh. <clears throat> that uh, you turned 25 on the day that you won the gold, the team won the gold for the Olympics in 2004. And you said nothing quite matched that feeling. Can you describe a little bit about that? Yeah, so growing up there was no WNBA. So I was a little girl with a dream growing up on a farm in Indiana to play in the Olympics. And I'm one of the Olympic junkies, you know, growing up I would watch every second I could and cry at every gold medal ceremony. And so just for me to be able to, to represent my country is such a tremendous honor wearing a jersey that says USA across the front. And then having the opportunity to win a gold medal and standing up there and I'm extremely patriotic and you see your flag being raised and you're just filled with such emotion. And mm -hmm. so at 25, um, there, there's no better way to celebrate any birthday in your life, but for a dream to come true, it was, it was very special. So that's what I want to ask you. So you you didn't just end up in the Olympics because you worked so hard and you were so good. This was a dream that you had as a child mm -hmm. to one day Absolutely. be in the Olympics. It's incredible. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people, I wasn't very good at basketball when I was young. I was mm -hmm. tall, I was lanky, uncoordinated, um, but I, I worked and spent tons of hours building on my strength, working on my skills, and um, extremely competitive. And you know, never compared myself to other athletes, mm -hmm. um, but just truly wanted to see if I could reach my potential. And my potential gratefully got me there. Mm. And what do you attribute um, you, you touched a bit on your mother, but in terms of that, just that inherent drive you have to do your best and not just compare yourselves to others, what, what do you think is the foundation for that inner motivation? Well, I think um, part of it you're born with, this mm -hmm. intrinsic motivation, but part of it was just my mom teaching me mm -hmm. um, to set those goals for my life. A lot of times people don't reach potential because they're not, um, they're not, pushing themselves mm -hmm. or they don't believe that that's possible and 
they think it might be a little too far-fetched. Um, so for me, I've always set small goals to achieve, but also had these very like the Olympics. large. <laughs> oh, that's one of the big ones. Uh, the okay, very good. large good. goals. That was a small goal. I'm a little <laughs> nervous right now with what the big goal might be. I know, but I, I mean, dreams are, you know, huge aspirations. Mm -hmm. And so I think that whether you're an innovator, entrepreneur, and you, this creativity, I mean, dreaming, we need to have a generation of people that are doing that. And then alongside that, putting in the work ethic that's going to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. So after the Olympics, I, uh, you see people win the, the gold medal and go on a certain trajectory. It seems like you went into a path of service mm -hmm. and of charity work. I know the Nothing But Nets program to help fight malaria, Basketball Without Borders, um, Inspire Transformation, which is around AIDS reduction. So I want you to talk about that path and kind of some of those programs a little bit and what your involvement is. But I'm also interested in, um, they also, the, the, the common thread is Africa for those three. And I'm wondering what, what about Africa brings you in so much to want to make that a focus? I honestly, I, from Indiana to Africa, I, I could have never guessed as a, as a young girl that I would be spending a lot of time and be extremely passionate about that continent. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like I've always been open to the direction God is leading me. Mm -hmm. And in 2006, the NBA asked me to go to Kenya. And that was my first kind of introduction to uh, GBC, Global Business Coalition of HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. And so just eye-opening. Um, you know, and I really felt empathy and sympathy for the mothers that I met, for the children that I met, and felt a call to action when I returned to see what I could do to help. Mm -hmm. And I've been continuing to go back with various organizations, started my own in South Africa, and I'm just grateful that the platform of basketball has given me the ability to reach um, a lot of lives. So what is the name of the one you've, you've started? Inspire Transformation. Okay. You want to talk about that a little bit and how maybe how people can help? Sure. I, I started going down to South Africa near the Swaziland border. So, mm -hmm. I mean, South Africa is, is a beautiful country, one of um, probably the wealthiest in, in the continent, but it also is, has the highest, some of the highest HIV mm -hmm. rates, rape rates, domestic violence. I mean, a lot going on there. And so I um, have started going down and just continued to go back in whatever off seasons I could mm -hmm. and then felt called to try to start inspiretransformation.org. Um, you know, happy to help, whether it's service, whether it's donations, whether it's um, money, creating fundraisers, um, just been so what blessed. So what do you, uh, what's the program try to accomplish? Uh, what, how does it approach the transformation? So twofold, it's really building the community. Mm -hmm. And so we wanna make sure that it's sustainable. So that means that um, we're really empowering the community leaders to make the change themselves. So we recognize those foreigners, we can't come in and, and force anything. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to give them the tools, the resources, the knowledge to do that. So we have, we're building a, a women's crisis center there mm -hmm. to help. And then also kind of using the platform of sports. Soccer obviously is a dominant sport throughout mm -hmm. the world, but basketball as well. That's wonderful. Uh, and you find it, and you started that when? I've been going since 2007, okay. uh, officially started in 2012. Okay. Uh, and you'd mentioned earlier um, about your faith. Um, you're very open about it. You talk about it on your website. You talk about it. Um, you, can you share a little bit about how that has influenced you um, over your lifetime and how it continues to influence you? My faith, I would say, because I was so shy growing up, um, mm -hmm. my faith was something I kept, was very private about. But mm -hmm. I feel like my basketball career and my spirituality have kind of gone on parallel journeys as um, I became mm -hmm. more successful, had the platform to speak about my sport. I feel like God has also pushed me to be more open about mm -hmm. my faith. And, and a lot of that honestly just comes from gratitude. I recognize that everything I've been given, I mean, God has been blessing me with um, the talent, the opportunities to use that to serve him and to serve others. And I'm just so grateful um, to have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's hard for me not to speak about it because it's so, so much part of my life. Mm. And a lot of people in your position might not keep the gratitude. You know, there's a tendency for people to sort of think, well, maybe I did this, you know. So it sounds like you have always maintained the, the gratefulness. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and being back in Notre Dame, obviously, going to school here, mm. it's, uh, it's woven into the very fabric of the university. And I think it, it instills upon you the, the desire to, to take the knowledge you gain here and to, to find opportunities wherever you go from here to use them to serve others. And um, 
that's definitely been an influence in my life as well. So all this is going on and you decide, you know what, I need an MBA. I need, a, I need another degree. So you went back and you decided on Notre Dame, obviously. So besides the obvious fact that it's Notre Dame, um, why did you decide that you needed to get an MBA or wanted to get a degree? And how did you land, you know, ultimately on deciding to come here? I always knew I wanted to go back to grad school. Mm -hmm. um, I loved being a student and an athlete. Because you were a great student in addition to the fact that you're a great athlete. Just want to throw that out there. Well, thank you. But that's an important thing to mention. Um, so studying and working hard <laughs> is important, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, it definitely crosses right. all intersections in my life. And um, yeah, I knew I wanted to gain more knowledge. Um, I felt like I had a lot of experience mm -hmm. through basketball, through my nonprofit, through the organizations I work with, but recognized that business knowledge would be incredibly helpful, especially in the nonprofit space. Mm -hmm. um, or if I go into more corporate space, I could use my, my experience from the nonprofit and, and kind of um, help in that area as well. Mm -hmm. But for me, I mean, Notre Dame is the only place that um, I really consider coming back to. And this program has been just incredible. Um, executive MBA, so I'm working with um, people who are 10 years into their mm -hmm. careers and, and sometimes a lot older and just a so many different walks of life and careers and I feel like I've you know been blessed to learn from a lot of my classmates. Well I'm sure there are a lot of them are excited to have uh, you in the class I would imagine. So you just graduated. In May, May. so yes. So uh, okay coming up on a year and then um, so what are you focused on now in addition to your nonprofit work? What do you what do you see the next sort of years bringing for you? So I continue to work with our our league the MBA mm -hmm. um, uh, as an ambassador. So we have our MBA CARES initiatives that take me not only throughout the U.S. but globally. Um, mm -hmm. And then just interviewing with a few few different um, people, whether it's a foundation space, whether it's a corporate space. Um, thankfully, I have a few more months before May to, to figure this out, but um, somewhere it's going to be that intersection of, of business and service. Okay, well, I would imagine, right, to continue the trajectory you've been on. And so you have no, so your next big goal, what would you say is your next big goal? Or do you, you said you set small goals and then big goals, obviously getting the MBA is a pretty big goal. Do you have a, another big goal out there? Um, other than continuing what you're doing and, and growing what you're doing, is there a specific goal in mind? You know what, I'm, honestly, I'm at an intersection in my life where I'm, I'm figuring that out. Mm. Um, not too many careers end with a period exclamation point as athletes do. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, playing 13 years, there's a hard stop there. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of makes me reevaluate my life, which has been good for me. Um, and then kind of decide, okay, now which direction do I want to go? Basketball has been such a huge part of my life to this point. Mm -hmm. and, and so now taking a pivot on that, on that course. Mm. That's a good choice of words, right, for basketball pivot. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're looking to, obviously it's an important part of your history. How does it fit into the future? Because right, once you kind of retire, you're retired, but obviously you can be influential in that world for years to come. And you're, you're trying to decide how much you want to be involved in that, how much it is involved in your work, or you, you set a whole new course. Is that kind of where you're thinking? Yeah, it could be uh, any of the above. Uh, I could very easily stay working with the NBA in some capacity, work in our, our league office, work for a team. But, you know, I I'm also have this other passion of service and um, so really want to pursue the options to see which direction I want to go. Without a doubt, sports always going to be, and health and education are always going to be um, mm -hmm. something that I focus on. So you mentioned having mentors in your life and the role they had. So now going from being a mentee to being a mentor, what's that process been like? And how do you view that role as a mentor now? I've been blessed to have so many great mentors. And mm -hmm. I think that came from... Um, just seeking knowledge when I was young, whether it was from my coaches, my teachers, always trying to find somebody that I could learn from. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at Notre Dame, great guy, Greg Brown, who's the CEO of Motorola um, mm -hmm. Solutions and um, has just been a tremendous friend and mentor to me. I've had um, a lot of people on the MBA side that have really invested in my life and now are my bosses, Todd Jacobson and Kathy Behrens, and so fortunate. Mm -hmm to work for them, but to learn and watch and to see how they live their lives, how they make tough decisions, how they lead and manage others. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really helped me. But giving back to the next generation as a 
older player um, in the WNBA look to really help our, our young players. Did mm -hmm. that through leadership with our players union. Mm -hmm. And now back here, we have the Rosenthal Leadership Academy with our student athletes and of course, our uh, amazing young ladies on the women's basketball team. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty busy. Is a it, little bit, yeah. So do you have any time to actually <laughs> sit and think about this direction you want to take? Or are you so busy it's hard to even take time to think about it? Well, I think um, with leadership, you have to find those moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, to take some time, whether it's through meditation or self-reflection or prayer, and um, kind of give yourself a time, I think, every day mm -hmm. to, to figure out some of the tough challenges that are in your life. Because if, not, if you're not intentional about it, it's not going to happen. Mm. And what was it like coming back to campus as a student again? Because you'd obviously been back, I'm sure, before then in other capacities, speaking and being involved. But coming back as a student, what was that feeling like? It was a, it's a little different being a student and not a student athlete. Right. Um, <laughs> More time to study, <laughs> you know, theoretically. Uh, yeah, but it's just been, I mean, obviously the university has changed so much uh, since 2001 when I was here as an undergrad. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's ironic, a lot of my classmates will walk around campus and I'll say, I saw a picture of you in the huddle or the fortune or over um, at Legends. And so um, you get some laughs with my teammates of some of my younger years mm. here. But it's just been great uh, to come back, to be able to, to have an opportunity to work more with Mendoza, to work mm -hmm. more with um, some of our professors that I you know, can learn from, and there's so much going on outside of just the classroom here mm -hmm. at the university that I've been able to participate in. Mm. And in addition to um, the program, so you said you're graduating in May coming yes. up. Yes. Okay. Um, what has been, or some of the best experiences, uh, or most meaningful kind of time you've had in the program? I know EIL is the opening week where it's really focused on yourself and leadership, mm -hmm. and then you build relationships. Is there anything looking back that you think were some of the highlights of the program that you think people may not know about looking at the program or coming to the program? Yeah, absolutely. EIL is something, um, even if you can just come and do a leadership workshop here, mm -hmm. uh, I would highly recommend you learn so much about yourself. You learn um, really what your strengths and weaknesses are as a leader. And if you don't take the time to do a 360 evaluation to really go deep within yourself, there are a lot of things that you're not going to know you need to work mm -hmm. on and a lot of strengths that you might not perceive about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that that was a great start to the program. Um, you know, we have just such incredible professors here and just, uh, I've learned a lot as a psychology undergrad now in business. Um, mm -hmm. It's been truly helpful uh, to learn from some of the best here. And obviously, uh, John Affleck Graves, one of our, our professors, obviously leader of the university. So having the opportunity to learn finance from, mm -hmm. from him was challenging, mm -hmm. um, but in a very good way. As we close up, uh, just your thoughts on your role, okay, as a, as a mentor we talked about. You were obviously inspired by a lot of people in, throughout your life. Now you're an inspiration to many people. How does that feel? Do you think about that? Do you try not to think about that? You know, what, what, is that, what does that feel like? I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that as mm -hmm. much. I, I just try to um, really just meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we, we did a leadership kind of evaluation. Empathy was one of my strongest scores. And so, you know, when I'm out, just really try to connect, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the student athletes that I'm talking to, whether it's in the corporate space or, or a, a mother that I'm meeting in Africa, um, really try to understand what their lives are like. And, and then what I would encourage people to, to think about is we all have an area of influence and we all have a different skill set that can be used to help better and, and um, serve others. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to be a professional athlete or Olympic gold medalist to be able to do that. And so just to encourage everyone to think about, you know, what do they have to offer? Mm -hmm. um, and it could be knowledge, it could be resources, it could be an opportunity. Um, a lot of times, honestly, it's just your time. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for your time. <laughs> I appreciate it tremendously. Uh, well, that's it for today. I um, hope you enjoyed the conversation. Um, she's incredibly delightful in person, so those of you who have never met her, you're missing out. But um, if you want to hear more about Mendoza Dialogues or Mendoza, go to mendoza.nd.edu. And thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you.